the microphone still up there? Can I move that for me? Okay, fabulous. Sorry. All right, I think I'll get us started. Um, I apologize for the darkness, but with the flickering lights, it seemed like this would be best to get us started to do um, a few slides, and then uh, we'll have a chance for some input. Uh, my name is Chris Delaganti. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Business Services here for the school district, and I appreciate you all taking time to come out and talk about uh, Delmar Hill's modernization plans, and uh, especially looking at uh, phasing options and student vocation, and giving you some more information. And so. Uh, before I get started, I just want to recognize we have our superintendent, Dr. Third here, uh, Carlos Avalos, who's our director of maintenance operations and facilities, and of course your principal, um, Lee. Good to see everybody. Thanks for being here. So uh, I, what I'm going to do is I have uh, a few slides to take us through just to kind of set the stage and then to provide some more information. So our objectives tonight are to uh, review a little bit of the prior presentation just uh, for uh, looking at the list of RSVPs or a few uh, names that I, I don't think I saw at the original meeting. So we've trimmed that down just to give the context for the, the prior meeting. Um, some understanding of options for our student relocation. And so from the last meeting there was uh, input and feedback on um, well, if the students are off campus, where would they go? And what might that look like? And so we have more information to be able to share with you about location, about uh, potential location, about what that might look like for a year off campus, and trying to help understand what uh, the process would look like. And then um, asking you to give, do some input. So again, we're gonna ask input for you. So um, questions you have, uh, things we should be considering as the district as we look towards this, so that we can continue to um, refine and improve uh, just as we've done in the past with any of the uh, big tasks that we take on. So we'll start with uh, the modernization, and so we uh, came out in October and had, there were a couple of uh, uh, meetings that we held in early October, one here and one in Torrey Hills, and we shared about the two construction options that were in front of us, and one is a phased on-site option, and to do that on-site, uh, as I shared, it would take about twice as long, it would be two school years, it would cost a little under $30 million is our cost estimate for that. Uh, versus off-site, we pull students off-site, it allows our construction team to get in uh, and have control over the full site. We'd be able to do it in uh, two summers and a school year, and we would estimate the cost estimate is coming in at um, $25.5 million. And so we gathered some input on that. Uh, as we were talking with uh, community members, we shared a little bit about what might that look like. So students on-site, uh, we had the cost and the timeline. Um, we also know there'd be construction during school days. Uh, there'd be some tra traffic and space impacts. We only have one real um, obvious uh, entrance to this campus, as opposed to some of our other campuses where you have potentially two in uh, entrances, and you could, you could segregate and have you know, students come in this way, and construction team come in this way. Uh, the phased movement using existing buildings and portables, what that means is in the end you'd have students and staff in, in one area, and we'd be working on another area. At a point, we'd need to then move students into the area that had been worked on, and then work on the area that hadn't been worked on. The fact that the school is really one school that is all one space means that we'd then be having to find a way to divide off part of it, um, keep it from uh, being connected, and, and sort of uh, wall it off in some way so that we can do some of the work. Uh, and then there's obviously the upside of all students and staff staying on campus. We're able to keep uh, the students and staff together. If they're off-site, uh, of course, the cost in the one school year, uh, there would be no construction of the school site. Uh, we would be doing transportation to a school outside of the neighborhood. And of course, then students and staff are split between two sites. We shared a little bit about our Measure MM project budgets, and there was more than this, but this is uh, the final slide that showed as we uh, moved, have moved through and we've had some delays um, with our Delmar Heights project related to the litigation. We've had cost escalation that has happened over time. Uh, it leads to um, unfunded uh, Measure MM uh, deficit. Now, we, we knew that we wouldn't just use Measure MM, but we wanted to look at it through Measure MM as one lens. And then we looked at what are the other district funds we could use towards our facilities program, and we have a number of them. We have deferred maintenance funds that are really usually used for deferred maintenance over time. So those could be used developer fees, some capital outlay funds, and then the CFD Melrose funds that uh, we'd always planned to use for them. And so then there's an overall program deficit that we talked about. And then we talked a little bit about why there was that deficit. We have uh, Delmar Heights School rebuild is now $20 million over the original budget. There has been litigation and a three-year delay. There's escalation over that period of time. Pacific Sky um, had a uh, delayed renewed permit being processed in the beginning. There was some escalation at the beginning of uh, COVID when we were bidding that out. Delmar Hills Academy modernization, we had some delay, we had escalation. We've also talked 
Um, we have had some scope increase due to seismic analysis. This is about to turn 50 years old. So um, looking at the walls and looking at um, analysis through the division of the state architect who oversees construction in school districts, uh, there is a little bit more scope that needs to go into making sure that we uh, rebuild that up to code for today's code. And then other projects, again, delays and escalation have led to uh, increases in cost. So that is, in a nutshell, what we talked about in about 15 minutes at the, uh, the first two meetings. So the questions that we got, a lot of the questions that I, that I got from people were around, well, where would students go? And uh, what would that look like? And what would it look like for our students? And I recognize that I mean, that's very legitimate question. So we wanted to come out early and get input as early as we could, and then knowing we could come back and provide more information. So uh, one question and some, some conversation we have is around, well, the enrollment at Del Mar Hills is this, and the enrollment at Del Mar Heights is this, and if you put those together, couldn't we fit all the students at Del Mar Heights? But it's not just enrollment, it comes in sections of students. And so when you think about it, in kindergarten here at Del Mar Hills, we have two sections. We have an English only section and we have a um, slip section. So those two sections may not add up to 42, 44 students, but those are two sections that need two classrooms. Currently, Delmar Hills has 14 sections. Delmar Heights has 13 sections, which make, gives us a total of 27 sections. And each one of those sections is a class of kids that needs a classroom. The rebuilt Delmar Hills, Delmar Heights school will have 21 classrooms for K-6 students. So, as you can see, the Delta is six. We have six classrooms that we don't have at Delmar Heights uh, to be able to house students. So we don't have the capacity at Delmar Heights to house all of Delmar Hills and all of Delmar Heights. And so that led to part of what we needed to do, um, and we didn't have the answer last meeting because we needed to look at the schools across the district and look at not just our roll up and enrollment numbers and what we expect to have next year, but what do we expect to have capacity wise in those schools and what rooms could be potentially be used. So what we have done then based on this analysis is those six extra sections will be three grade levels. Um, we would look at uh, if we have six sections or three grade levels from Delmar Hills, uh, having our older students move uh, off campus to a site uh, other than Delmar Heights. Uh, it uh, has been successful with our Delmar Heights off-site, uh, and, and we'll talk a little bit why we did that. We would look at fourth through sixth grade, um, anticipating Sage Canyon as a site. Sage Canyon has some space, we have some extra portables that are there for some work we did uh, last year, and so it provides um, adequate space for us to, to be able to house at least six classrooms and even have a little bit of buffer, so if we uh, you know, had any adjustments in enrollment, it should be able to house our students at Sage Canyon. So what that looks like, Delmar Heights, uh, we would have our K through third, that's eight sections. We project if we rolled up the students and had about the same kindergarten class, 151 students. They'd need eight rooms, it's closer to home and in the boundary of residence for our younger students. Uh, our, our district culture of parents walking primary age students to their classroom is, is a key part of it too. So by having our, our younger students in that area, it, it allows you to more easily be able to walk your younger students to the classroom, be able to be able to interact in that manner. Um, Sage Canyon uh, for our fourth and sixth grades would be six sections. Um, we roll up our what are currently third through fifth graders. That would be 117 students, which would need six rooms. We would uh, you do busing, um, offer busing from Delmar Heights. Um, it would obviously be your choice. You would be more than welcome to drive students, but we would uh, have busing that would, would go from Delmar Heights and be able to bring students to Sage Canyon to allow for transportation as well. Which would have, also, if you have children in both grade levels, you can have drop off at one space. Um, and trying to make it uh, as easy as possible. So the question that comes up is how does the site operate if we have to uh, split like this? Uh, we would have really satellite campuses at each site, so students continue to have the teachers from their home school. So if you have a current third grader and they're going to fourth grade, they'll have fourth grade uh, teachers from Delmar Hills. Uh, students would have, we just continue to have our class sizes remaining the same. We're staffing it just like it's Delmar Hills because it's going to be Delmar Hills at the two satellite campuses for one year and it's going to be Delmar Hills back at Delmar Hills. So we're really just looking at staffing it and running it um, as best we can in the same way. PTA and DMSEF remain site specific and we work to help collaboration just as you've collaborated with Delmar Heights here while they've been on site. Uh, we have Delmar Hills administrative and front office staff divided and we'd be able to support at both sites, provide space at both sites so that you'd have you know, friendly faces that you recognize when you go into that front office and be able to connect with when you are going to those schools. School day would be the same. 
Uh, we have before school supervision that starts a little bit earlier, so that if you were dropping off two children at uh, Delmar Heights, we'd be able to accommodate having some support and having some supervision at the school sites before the school day. Um, get grade level teams together. We'd have after school programs at both sites. Um, we'd, be, we'd work to accommodate after school program. Um, there's obviously one at, uh, at Delmar Heights and, and working to accommodate there. And there's also, depending on what works for you, working on um, if there are a need or a want to have after school program at Sage Canyon School. And then busing, um, we would obviously offer busing to Sage Canyon. Uh, we would anticipate picking up at Delmar Heights uh, itself because we would, to get students to school, um, you'd be picking up from Delmar Heights a little before school starts. And so they'd pick up at um, Delmar Heights, drive over. I think it's 715, 725, somewhere in that range that we could pick up for um, currently for our Delmar Heights school. The students that go to Ocean Air, very similar uh, bus trip. Uh, then we would have uh, pick up at Sage Canyon and return to Delmar Heights. And so, uh, there'd be the ability to um, have, we'd have some support, we could do some support here right now for students who are, are waiting um, for siblings and things like that to make sure that uh, you could do a pickup at one time and have that additional staffing to support that, uh, that, that bus drop off and pickup. So impact on your child, again, grade levels are together, teaching teams are together, we uh, work to support teaching PTA programs, um, DMSCF, after school program in enrichment, and then we work to preserve uh, some of the unique culture. And so, uh, you know, in talking to Ms. Sleet, you know, we'd look at things like, of course, there's back to school night and open house. Um, we'd work to make sure that you're able to attend if you have students at two different schools and you're able to uh, connect. Um, Delmar Hill school-wide activities, and then, so here's a list of, of items that, that came up as Ms. Sleet and I were talking. Um, promotion and other traditions. So we'd be working to make sure that we can still have an exciting, fun year and kids have memories. Um, they'd have some unique memories where we still have kids where they first get on the bus and they're, they're driving. It's, it's a unique experience in Del Mar. And so um, there is some collegiality that comes with uh, riding the bus with some of your friends. And so we'll make it so that um, they do have an exciting year and we'll take care of the students and they will come out of it with a brand um, new interior to their school, a new face to their school, and a beautiful new Del Mar Hills at the end of it. That's what it would look like. Um, I'd be happy to take a few questions. Um, I'll, I'll cut up the lights too. And then, um, then we'll ask you. Do you want me to put the lights back? Chris, I, I have had a sick operator that has been So uh, there's sort of two considerations. Um, one is space, and the other is a lawsuit. Uh, if, if we put portables on there, that would constitute another CEQA process um, and potentially another lawsuit. I, I, having just spent three years fighting a lawsuit to build the school, I'll be honest, I'm a little um, hesitant to try to put portables and potentially have it stopped and go through a process where the portables are stopped um, because of this CEQA process and a lawsuit that can hang it up and, and join us and it, it costs a lot of money. And that's obviously the biggest concern we have about trying to put portables in. So will the kids actually be in portables then? Is that, is that the Not necessarily. Uh, we'll have to work out the location. So there's a combination of portables and classroom spaces at Sage Canyon. I, I can't tell you exactly the spaces that we would um, have students in at Sage Canyon yet. Can you explain the what would they actually be suing relating to Steve? Just because kids. So you can challenge any CEQA document, okay. uh, and uh, our, our CEQA document that was challenged found that there were three things that we needed to study further. When we studied them further, they were able to be mitigated down to having no impact. So while we did do a focused DIR, there was no 
there was no unmitigatable impact, which is the requirement to what, what an EIR is supposed to focus on. So there is the opportunity to challenge any environmental document that is put forward. And if, uh, so my concern is that if uh, it was challenged, that we would end up spending time and money and potentially not being able to put the on in a timely manner to get this done. That honestly is my biggest concern. If I could touch on that, I did operations consulting for Will Scott, which makes the portables for the state of California, and they can pop those things out in like 30 days or less. They make the portables that are all around here. And they are hopefully a partner with a school when portables are proposed to help with all of the red tape and legal things. My worry is, are we anticipating a potential lawsuit or are we willing to stand firmly and say we know we can get these few portables to keep the kids together also my only personal feeling is we have yet to see timeliness on these three models as you showed in your first slide so one year in my mind is not one year it's going to be longer Absent a lawsuit, we haven't actually had any delays. Um, the, the Pacific Sky School was done before the uh, date we expected it to have completed, um, and the actual timeline of the construction for Doma Heights will be completed within the timeline, uh, other than being enjoined. And, uh, so I, I'm confident that we'll be able to get students out, get students back onto campus after this year of construction. Has that issue of CEQA been consulted with the attorneys that were helping? and whether the portables would affect a potential lawsuit. I mean, technically they're portables. Um, has that actually been looked into on a legal perspective at all? I've not asked for a formal legal opinion. No. Yes. If there's still a budget budget deficit for the modernization of Delaware Hills, will it definitely happen next year with that deficit that's still there? So, sorry. So there's a still there's a budget deficit you just saw from that table you just showed for the Del Mar Hills modernization. So would it still definitely happen next year with that deficit that's there? Yeah, so we still have the funds in the, the general obligation bond and uh, actually already holds to be able to, to to build the Del Mar Hills modernization. So there wouldn't be a problem with it's really an overall um, programmatic deficit, not a deficit for this individual project. So we, um, where that will come into a major account is, you know, as we get down towards um, Torrey Hills and Sigmore Ridge and Ocean Air uh, modernization, more so than, say, um, Delmar Hills CDM. Okay. Yeah. Come over to this side. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned continuity of program, and um, so I don't see it for the SLIP program. I don't understand why our fourth graders are going to be at a different school. The teacher is going to be at a different school where there is no SLIP program. I think that um, a SLIP program is the whole school uh, is embodying it. There's signs outside in Spanish and in English. And if we have one of our grades at a school that doesn't have a SLIP program, I see that as a, a rupture for the teacher and for the students of that program. That's a great, that, that's a great observation and something that um, I appreciate and something that um, we're, the questions and considerations that we want to take back and the, you know, this is not the final result, this is the result of us doing some thinking and coming back to you for those suggestions, so I appreciate that. Yeah, we had, I remember the last time we had spoke about it, kind of on the same line as what you're saying, is that uh, the goal, another goal was to keep SLIP together. And so I know we were kind of throwing around the idea of putting the, you know, kinder through fourth together and then take, splitting off the fifth and sixth. Um, is there a reason why that changed or is this just over, what was your thought process? So in the, um, the second meeting, I heard feedback from a couple of people talking about our English only mm -hmm. friends and so that being a priority over it. And so um, just looking at the numbers, okay. we currently, don't necessarily have the space. And so we'll um, take that back and look at is there a way to get two more classes at Del Mar Heights? Is there a, uh, what other okay. way to, like, that, that's definitely something to, okay. for us to look at and kind of consider. Um, and then the idea of just 
and I don't know if that's what you were saying, but the idea of just K4, just slip. Um, we just heard some feedback and it sounded like for our students, you know, with those English only classes and connections that that probably wasn't the best. So, so I think that but Yeah, the best no, I was more concerned with just the overall yeah, keeping Totally understand them. where you're coming from, yeah. So given that SQL allows you to expand the population by 25%, without additional SQL review, what specific parts of SQL are you concerned about? Um, I, I don't have specific SQL areas. I have concern about um, the generality of uh, the litigation that we've been exposed to on, on that project. And so so um, you don't have any specific concerns that you're aware of that you would be sued on, it's just you've been through it, you don't want to try it again, you don't want to leave any openings, or do you have specific concerns where you know that you're exposed? Or is it just fear? It is um, concern about risk and, um, and time delay based on previous experience. But save the field and you know, people that formed it and, and sued us. Yeah. So, I think it was slide three where you showed the different uh, sections or classes or however we call them. So we're still looking at it from Hills versus Heights perspective, but I believe in the previous meeting, the question was asked what that would break out if there was no Hills or Heights, it was just all students in Heights, right? So like, couldn't there be an option for a year if we're confident that we'll get it in on time that we just move on the moment to Heights would there be enough classrooms to be able to fit all the sections with that entire population? I know that's not going to be popular because that's going to be um, probably a, a detriment to our, our faculty, right, and our teachers, and, and none of us want that. But I think like, at the expense of keeping our kids together who have been through three years with two schools and now introducing a third, plus both my kids are in Spanish language, so that's, that's obviously a concern as well. Like, if we can fit everybody at heights without the, the, the worry of lawsuits and get everybody into classrooms and not portables, we should absolutely be considering that as an option. Um, so I did not analyze that option because I heard a lot of pushback to that in, when it was brought up at the last meeting. Um, we could certainly do some, you know, look at some numbers related to it, but there was also my takeaway, and I, I'm happy to be corrected, um, was that people felt like they prefer, I heard a lot more about keeping um, some of the, the feeling of hills and keeping some of that connection over the year and concern about if you get absorbed, um, what happens to the hills was something that I heard from people after the, uh, during that meeting. And so, um, you know, I, I can certainly look at roll up numbers and rolling up our, our sections and what we project and whether that's potentially an option. I think we'd be, um, I, I'm not saying because I want to look at it and, and have accurate Data to it, but like, we could look the at culture that. stuff, the things that we can solve as a community, right? Like, mm -hmm. we can, I'm sure we can figure out a way to have two PTAs that are still representing each of the, the elements that are, are part of the culture from each of the schools. I think that we can embody the pieces of the, the, um, the learning and, and the, the curriculum that each has unique and make sure that those stay intact. Um, you know, we've already done many of the PTA events together. Um, and I think there's enough overlap with the different school events that, that we can come together as a community for the better of our students and our children to make that work for a single year if that's, that's really what we're facing. I would agree. <laughs> access to Mira Montana Drive. No. Right, so there still will be only one way into that school and one way out. But it's the same here. No, so there's actually three different, different directions. So I uh, first I would say that actually uh, the, the CEQA documents were sued and it was found that the fire um, portion was, was adequately studied. Um, second, I would say that we do have evacuation plans that are 
part of our comprehensive, comprehensive school safety plans that every one of our school sites uh, creates. So there is an evacuation plan at every one of our schools, and that will be part of the um, school staff at Delmar Heights and then this lead we work with them. Right, but the previous comprehensive school safety plan for Heights had an alternative evacuation area out to near Montana Drive. But the, the, current, the, the current Delmar Heights has the same exact access that the previous Delmar Heights had. So um, we have the same access points and... But you're looking at putting more students on there. And there is no room for portables. So if you haven't been by the school, please go by. There's no place to put portables except for in the parking lot. And even that's tight. So uh, same access points. There will, if you have uh, the... 150 students that are projected to go there, and we have the 280 to 300. We still have less students than we're at Delmar Heights uh, before it was rebuilt. So, I think numbers wise, it will fit as well. Right, but we had to some space before we did. Yeah. Now we have classrooms right on the canyon, right next to the resort. Um, so the other, the input that I would ask people to do, and you started, but I think that part of the purpose of doing this at tables is that uh, there are always, in any group, you know, there are people who are willing to raise their hand, there are people who still have ideas but haven't raised their hand, and so I'd ask you to spend a 10 minutes or so at your table, are there any other questions? Are there any other considerations we should have? And I'd like you to have a conversation, we'll come back and we'll all answer any other questions, we can have a conversation as a whole, but it's, it's important that we also do this as a table, people have a chance to talk, those that have good ideas but aren't wanting to raise their hand, I, I want to get those down because we take those all in too, and so um, 10 minutes of that, um, so work at your table, uh, you know, talk together, questions or any considerations, and then see if you have Yes, I just wanted to add, first of all, thank you all for being here tonight to provide input and asking such great questions. <coughs> very much value, everything that you are sharing. But I also, as we think about input, I also just wanted to share with you, in talking with my staff, we are very committed to making next year a very special year for our students. So as you're providing input, if you have additional ideas on how we can make it a special year, even though we will be off of our campus, I would love to hear your ideas because we will be working to come up with as many creative ideas to make it a special year, even though we won't be here at school, at our school. Um, and as Chris shared, next year is Delmar Hills turns 50. So that's also a really exciting thing and how we can make it a 50 year celebration and continue that celebration once Delmar Hills opens and reopens. And as we think about our sixth graders, how can we make sixth grade extra special for, the, for those students? <coughs> and when we do cut the ribbon, for our new school, inviting our sixth graders back, making them a part of that celebration even though they've been promoted from Delmar Hills. So any ideas that you can provide in addition to what Chris has shared is greatly appreciated and we can have more conversations as well. But I just wanted to share that with you that our staff is very committed to ensuring that our students have a wonderful school experience next year. And we've even talked about, you all know how important our families are to us this year and we are seeing the benefits of that with our students and we are committed to making that still happen next year and being very creative with the bus situation so that our children can come together at times on the Delmar Heights campus most likely to be able to still build community in addition to our PTA events and things that happen with DMSEF like our Jogathon, all of those special things. So if you have any ideas and want to add that to your poster, please and we'll have more conversations too. Okay. I just have one quick question that might be helpful for everybody that's putting feedback down. What was done for the Heights um, for our Hills parents and students to be able to familiarize themselves with the faculty and whatnot when we were joining those two campuses together? And um, what, if, if nothing was done, what do we think we could do for um, whatever the campus we're going to is so that the, the students aren't meeting new faces entirely on day one, right? Like an opportunity to like meet their classmates or meet their faculty that they'll be interacting with and, and such and you know, so forth. Absolutely, that's a great question. We did have COVID happen right. at the exact same time <laughs> that we joined our campuses together. So it was a unique situation because we were first in cohorts 
then we were in stable groups, I think it was called, if I remember, if memory serves. So it, it did create, we weren't able to come together as much of a community because of COVID, and we even had to separate within our own Delmar Hills community. Um, but now that COVID, we're through COVID, it, with having PTA events, that has been very key, I think, to bringing our communities together. And then we have the same recess, the same lunch, so now our children are able to play together. But that is cer certainly something that we will think about even more so as we join. I mean, our children, our children know the Del Mar Heights community students kindergarten through third grade because they're already playing together. So I had a student today, it was really cute, she stopped by to go get her water bottle after school and she said, whatever happened with that dolphin school? <laughs> said, or her parents are actually here tonight, I see them. So whatever happened to that dolphin school? And I said, well, they're still here. And she's, and she's, I said, do you mean Delmar Heights? And she goes, no, I mean the dolphin school. And I said, no, they're still here. So I think that they very much see that they are just a part of our community and we can certainly bridge and make those connections if we do end up at Sage Canyon for our upper grade students to build that community as well. And many of those children are going to go to middle school together too. So why not start now? Again, that's another piece on how we can make it a special year. That didn't really happen between the sixth graders and the Yeah, but we can. But it was, I mean, it's still, we were just coming out of COVID, so that probably happened. Yeah, and I work closely with all of the principals. We're a really tight group, so I can work very closely with Maria Parker to make that happen for our kiddos. And still keep our Del Mar Hills community really connected too. Because I know that's really important to our community, it's important to our staff, and it's important to our children that we stay as much of a community as we can, even though we'll be divided for just a short year. <laughs> but please, write down all those ideas. Yeah, I don't know. 
there was a need for a portable was included in the cost estimate for um, the off-site uh, option. Right, but I guess going back to the potential of one campus, if, if we get that, that numbers in enrollment blend, you know, which was not popular, and I don't think it will be popular, but I think we need that information to make an informed decision, then that could result in freeing up funding from the cost of portables or busing, et cetera, that could go back to the school and making the school better. Other table? Yes, sir. Yeah, you, <coughs> excuse me, you just asked for a thought that came up from the yeah, table. Please. So I think one thing that I didn't have empathy for before the conversation is the challenge of the families that have kids that are in four, five, six, and, and one, two, three, where, where they're split. Because there's some of the other things, you know, kids are adaptable, and some of the other changes aren't quite as hard as that. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Yeah. Just thought of it, but, um, so kids who go to the Boys and Girls Club, how do how will they get to the Boys and Girls Club for aftercare? We will uh, we'll make sure we work out a, a way to, uh, as we're doing the, the, the drop-off, we'll, we'll um, definitely figure out a way to, to make Boys and Girls Club work. So I had also a similar question about aftercare. Like even if it's the, the Del Mar's aftercare, is, is the thought for them to stay at Sage Canyon aftercare? And if so, like how are they gonna get bus back or do they not have that opportunity then? So they're, um, most I think of the students, uh, there'll be a, students who come here and then go to aftercare, correct, from uh, Del Mar? I'd have to double check on that. I can look into that. Yeah, we, I mean, we'll, we'll um, I would imagine that we would offer an option for if you know, you're picking up students, you have students, especially giving them two different grade levels, um, to be able to access aftercare here. Um, that may be a reason you prefer to access aftercare at Sage Canyon, but uh, there, and we can make either work. One thing that, we, that Heinz does provide is we have after school activities that happen outside waiting for the bus for siblings to come. So we take care of the Heights younger students waiting for the bus and then families are able to, parents are able to pick up their children when the bus arrives. So we provide that care for that half hour. Um, but I'd have to look into see if, if Heights children then go to after school care. But I can look into that. One other question. Will you even be able to have the boys and girls club after care here? Or will it be so, so much construction and they should still be able to operate because of their entrance and the, um, well, that will be a, a problem for the um, period of time. So that's, that's going to be uh, That's huge. Yes. Where they're going to I'm not laughing. Yeah, well, I... Sorry, you're going to engage with the Boys and Girls absolutely. Club regarding this? Um, regardless, we're going to have construction there, and so there's going to be a process we have to work through with the Boys and Girls Club as well. Yeah. Yes? Um, one idea, and I haven't attended the other meetings, so I know that blending seems not very popular, uh, but what about at least considering blending the sixth graders? Um, I mean, they are going to go to middle school next year. They will be blended with their other peers at Delmar Heights, um, and having It'll also give them options to hop from class to class in different subjects more, like a middle school environment. I know that we like to prep our kids for middle school. Um, and I know at least my daughter's going into sixth grade, our classes are super, very small. You know, there's a benefit to that, but um, there's, for me as a driving parent who works full time and Ubers all the time for my children, I'd rather not be Ubering them to Sage Canyon and picking up at Del Mar Heights, right. if possible. Um, but I, I know that, and I also know that some of the other grades have very low enrollment. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't have to be combined with Bills and Heights. It could be kind of K and first could combine, especially if those two, like next to Lano or Kindergarten History only has like a dozen students or something, and next year they're all from the low, right, mm -hmm. English classes. Um, you know, and, the, and I know that there's an issue with the teachers come back, but they can partner teachers. Yeah. That's and for just for a year, you know, maybe that's the way, it's only six classrooms. If we can, you know, maybe the sixth graders, we save, we save a classroom, we can buy a for second, third, that's two more classrooms. You know, are there ways to kind of shave down the split that is not I will 
say that combined classes at Ocean Air are never favored for the older grades. Yeah, I think it all works for younger. Exactly. I would actually combine height and health. Is my suggestion. I know people are anti it and they want to like separate the kids, but they are going to go to middle school next year. It is going to be combined, and we can still have separate events. I know like my daughter is like very involved in the musical theater program here. And my son can't wait to do it, and he's in fourth grade, so if we end up separating him out because he's in the split and keeping him at height, how is he gonna get to Sage Canyon to do the musical theater program with like a very large commitment? Are we gonna have extra buses busing those kids? Yes, and that's a one thing that um, I'm gonna. No, it isn't. Sorry. We will be working with Ms. Lee to create a committee, a group of staff that help with planning. So there are a number of these things that are going to be operational that we're going to have to look at. Okay, this is a program. We need to make sure that we're thinking of it ahead. This is something we need to do. Um, we've, we've already talked about the surf family. So there are pieces like that, like the musical. So where, where is it going to happen? How are we going to do it? How do, so those are all pieces that we will commit to, but it's going to take getting a group together and talking with the staff and having that staff group, and we did this with Delmar Heights and looking at how do we then think about the pieces that are needed, work together on planning it so that we can then um, prepare to transition to, to next year and then have it go smoothly. And so those are all pieces that will be part of uh, our next steps in working on it. And those are really legitimate questions but will be part of a process of us working with the staff that, that have done this and have um, put on wonderful musicals and, and can work together with us to, to come up with, and we can support from a district level, but we can, can can really work through what are these pieces that we need to be thinking of and setting up so that we're thinking of them before. So that's a great example of it, and that is something that, as we're looking at this and finalizing the construction phasing plan and then getting into, okay, this is the, the these are the things we need to work on so that we can have that, that continuity and next steps and we're do so that it's something we'll do as we move into the next year. And I've been talking with my sixth grade teachers about opportunities to meet with our current fifth grade parents so that we can start to brainstorm special ways to make it very special, not only for all of our children, but especially for our sixth graders too. So we want to open up that dialogue and, and come up with lots of ideas. Yes. What about, uh, I don't know if you've like consulted parents of current height students or even current height students what they didn't like or what they did like about this current situation mm -hmm. they're in. I'm not sure if you That's a great and we have that's a opening that, that up for us to have a dialogue with mm -hmm. them because I think they would really be the best. Yeah. And and staff as well. So that's something that we'll be doing not just with the Hill staff will help us with this kind of planning, but we'll also be reaching out to talk about, you know, um, maybe lessons learned and things that we could kind of build upon as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're one of those parents. So we have a sixth grader at, at Delmore Heights and a first grader here. So we haven't built up a lot of trust in kind of the district's execution over the last couple of years. And so my question was, you know, what's the risk if we do nothing? We wait for one school to be built and then, you know, before kind of embarking on the, the next phase of this modernization. You mean, how do you mean, that? like not, not move forward with uh, modernization? Is there a risk year? if we do nothing? Like the, the, don't the, modernize, don't modernize at all. Not, not never, but I'm saying that the, the presentation made it seem like there's an urgency that's involved. And so I was trying to better understand, is there a specific uh, urgent timeline kind of bound uh, that is forcing us to make a decision? Well, uh, so this is the next project we have designed that is complete and, and with the Division of State Architect being reviewed, so we'll be able to fit it out if we just stop and don't move forward. Um, and the biggest uh, risk is the uh, increased cost for the project. I mean, costs escalate on an annual basis. There's, inflation will happen, and so it will cost instead of 25 and a half million, it will cost you know, three, four, five percent more. Um, so the goal with any facilities program is you continue to build things on a regular basis so that you can use the money when it's most valuable. Um, and the longer you wait, the less valuable the money is. So that, that'd be the biggest risk in delaying is um, uh, you know, we're, we're getting less for our money or it's costing more to do what is designed. Uh, at this point, we have designs that are you know, being reviewed and should be completed so we can 
bid it out. So uh, in, in the end, the, the options are gonna still be, we either spend two years uh, with construction and, and staff on site, and students on site, or we move students off site for a year. So that it, it won't change. So I just don't see the upside of waiting either. If we wait, we're just doing it a year later and it costs more. I mean, if, if there's, that, that's why we're trying to work together to come up with the answers to these questions, because in the end, we're gonna have to answer these questions one way or another, you know? Um, the application, so it sounds like that jumped in pretty quickly, um, and I totally get your invitation about the lawsuit, but um, since we also have the stage opinion option, could we file the super application and see if there's litigation? And then if there is, just drop it and then just go for the stage, but in the meantime, just see if anybody is I mean, how do we know they're not going to see the school? Right? I like, yeah. you know, like, say if you're, I don't know. Like, right. How do we know they're not going to see the school? Right? Like, once construction starts, there's a wizard, there's a mural, there's something else that needs to be saved, or there's a medkit, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> how do we know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, when you're trying to apply here. Right. You know? yeah, right. In which case, it would be more important for us to have campus and just to see the right. right. the portable on campus is open. Well, I'll just actually consult with an attorney to see if that is an issue. Right. Or should we reach out to see if there's anything that we can offer a lot more? Portable's pop up everywhere. Yeah. So we can uh, do a little more investigation on that side. Other thoughts, considerations, questions? We're coming to the end of the hour. Well, like, is there any, has the district taken into consideration that some parents especially parents who are in both English programs, um, who have fourth, fifth, and sixth, and then have a kindergarten or first, second, and third, and make just free to roll into summer heights, decreasing the size of our Hill classes. Because, I mean, if my son was at fourth grade and in Spanish, it would be what I would be doing. Mm -hmm. That there, there may be, and that would be an option that happened with um, Heights families when they came to Hills, when, um, when we first, so there, there may be some movement related to that. But yeah. you're saying if we take a survey and we find out, we can plan, maybe that would obviate some of the numbers problem? Well, yeah, you might only need one fourth grade, one fifth grade class and one sixth grade class for the more hills. For the second. For the sections. Now the surplus of six is five, and then all of a sudden it's four. Well, and then all of a sudden you're three. combining two first. Yeah, K and first is combined, and boom. This is a blend option where heights for four years, it only made sense to divide K through three, fourth, fifth, six because of space constraints. I don't think that if we know the enrollment, I mean, that's critical to move forward. If we know the enrollment numbers, um, we might have a different, different feedback for you. And so, all I can do is work with the information we have. We can do a survey, but it doesn't lock anybody in. And we'll be starting enrollment in February. So, as we start the enrollment process, we'll have more information, and that could lead to adjustments. Uh, you know, it, it, there's. Uh, then. Say again. I don't know that it needs, that we need to wait until then because we have enrollment numbers now for both schools right. and just. Assume the same. Right? That's what this is down, based on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, the, for the heights right now, they only have one kindergarten class. Correct. Is that right? Correct. So, which means next year they would only have one, maybe one first grade class. Correct. And then the incoming kinder, maybe also one class. So, from your earlier slides, it says fourteen sections for the heights. For the hills. For the hills. Oh, is it, is it less 13 for, the, for the heights? It's 13. For the oh, okay. I read it. So you, you might not, the number might come down section wise for the heights. Potential, but I, yeah, yeah, we, we, um, so, so then again, that's where we can, we can survey, we can ask, but we need the actual enrollment to have that for sure in the kindergarten enrollment. So that, that is stuff that we will be focused on and be, you know, updating based on what we see as our enrollment, especially with the kindergarten enrollment as we get into the early spring too. I think she had a question. Sure. Um, I was wondering what the timeline is for deciding where you're gonna be locating people, different classes, different grades. And if we'll have that information prior to having to enroll our kids for next year? We will have
have uh, anticipated uh, that as you're talking about, you know, things come in lower, there's the potential that we could um, have more students that don't have to say, you know, I'm, I'm doing 13 classes based on this year, which would mean you'd have two kinders next year for some reason. Heights only had, you know, one kindergarten, there's one more class room that we have. So, so there's a little bit of, as you're doing enrollment, I'm getting enrollment from others, if we get kindergarten enrollment, it might open up space. Uh, it might adjust the number of sections we have. Like change, so you're saying, when you send out information for enrollment, you're not going to say, okay, Delmar Hills, if you're at 436, if you're at Sage, you're not going to have that finalized at that time? That, well, we'll have it anticipated, but I, I'm hearing very strongly, we want to be together. Yeah. If space opened up at Delmar Heights and we were able to fit K through four uh, because of enrollment, then we would, the fourth grade parents who just enrolled to go to Delmar Hills and Sage Canyon, we would try to place you at, you know, we, we, try to place those at Delmar Heights. So okay. yeah, I'm, I'm not saying more students would go to a different, like not go to Delmar Heights. I'm saying if we could get more students on Delmar Heights, we will. Okay. Yeah. But I think we all would like to know what the plan, the anticipated plan is at the time of our enrollment. Absolutely. So that we can make That's why we're here tonight, is yeah. to be able to give you where yeah. we are today and get further into it. I mean, we've, we've been, came out, we had the information we can share with last time. We, we are gathering you know, more input. We came back with more information based on the questions and the input you gave. And we will be able to circle back with you again before you enroll. So that, I absolutely hear where you're coming from. And that's, that's our goal is to continue to work with you. Yeah. Will preference be given to the geographical area for people who want to register their kids' heights from Geographical area. So if someone says, you know, I'm at CDM, and actually they're really full, I'm going to register my kid at Heights. For the option areas, right? Well, if they're in the option area, then that's their boundary school of their space, then they could potentially register at Heights. Um, I'm, so what is the, I'm not, I don't know if I'm totally following, preference, uh, well, I mean, I guess we're waiting to see where people register their children, right? Mm -hmm. And in the past, a lot of the schools, Carmel Valley, were full. And so some students ended up coming here to Hills or Heights mm -hmm. because the other schools were full. But now with Pacific Sky and low enrollment everywhere, that's not really the case because the verbs are kind of going on. Um, so then, isn't that a moot point? If it's low enrollment everywhere, why would they want to move their student to another school outside of their district? They, you can't have it both ways, right? Well, that's Sorry. what we were told, is when these schools are built, then then the boundaries would be changed so that people would go to their neighborhood we schools. And never talked about changing boundaries. So we having neighborhood schools, and having people have option to go to their neighborhood school and have their local school was, was the the goal of um, having nine schools. So we keep the neighborhood schools like Delmar Hills, have a neighborhood school in Pacific Sky, make sure that there are neighborhood options for students. We have never changed the option if there is space for families to um, choice into a, a, a different school for one reason or another, but we don't see a lot of people who are choosing to go to a school that is far from their home neighborhood school uh, just by choice. So. Uh, you still, the, the, the boundary resident student is um, the first priority on the priority list for uh, uh, attendance at a school. Okay. Yes, sorry, I missed you back on that. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, I just want to understand, so we are going, this is happening. This is happening starting in June. Like, this is it, right? Yes. Okay, that's, I just wanted to know yeah. that that was where we were. Okay, yeah. this is absolutely it. <laughs> We anticipate having state, um, uh, division of state architect approval and, and, and stamp documents by the spring and then being able to bid it out so that we have enough time to start the project and of course like Bregman School. Got it. Yep. Turn it to in Get things done. Will you be sending a survey to Hills and Heights families and will it, you know, <coughs> Idea or 
classes, maybe have sixth graders from Heights and Hills together. Could you come up with us, like if you, well, number one, will you survey families? And number two, will it include um, a question related to this proposal that we've been discussing tonight? Um, I have no problem surveying family. I'm not sure what the question is right now to survey with. So, um, yeah, I think what you're talking about, I need to do a little bit of analysis are of numbers. people interested? In, because there's you know, Let, a handful of us here tonight, but I think it's not you know, necessarily, it's not all families, and I think we are really able to right. capture more. So of, around the idea of combining um, hills and heights and, and to, some to, way. To allow that. for all of us to be at mm -hmm. one site for the whole year. But maybe not even taking that step initially, Survey the families to see where they're intending to enroll. Like, there's a shiny new school that's supposed to be opening up, and let's see who's planning to enroll their kids there. Right? And especially if there's an off campus off requirement for four to sixth yeah. graders. Right. And I think a lot of those parents are going to right. 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 transfer to Heights. Or maybe they wouldn't if they knew Hills was well, you know, here for the year. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think a simple Heights or Hills enrollment is, is a good starting point to at least see how those numbers evolve so you can see what enrollment looks like for next year so that you can even determine more accurately what your, your sections would look like because the problem might just resolve itself. Mm -hmm. Or we at least go from six classrooms down to two. But you're not we don't know. transparent in saying if you are a fourth, fifth, or sixth grader as, as the presentation stands tonight, mm -hmm. you won't be at the heights, you'll be at the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's me to be a follow-up survey, but but you know, like just to. to I feel like that's a. I mean, I think it's a yeah. 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 You put two questions. One is, do you have a plan on which school to attend? And the second one is, as a fourth, fifth, or sixth grade parent, knowing your child is going to be offsite at potentially Sage Canyon, would your enrollment change? Yeah. And also, are people going to be mad if they choose to switch to Heights, and then because of the lower enrollment, they'll stay all the Heights all together? Like, yeah. well, you know what I mean? Like, I'd be mad if I'd be like, oh, that could happen. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Could we do enrollment earlier than February? Is that a possibility, or is that just not feasible to have a better idea? That's a great question. Awesome. <laughs> I don't have an answer for you, but it's a great question. I mean, declaration. I don't know. <laughs> 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 so, can we start to get a sense, Chris and Dr. Fred, with the pupil placement form that we sent home to families about, right? We roll in next year. So that, and, and that's usually our Not a department I oversee. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about that piece too. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's, I mean, it's a great question. I, I, yeah. I know we're taking notes, and I know you put some things on. These are all, this is why we're here. So. Great questions. Great input. I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the point that was brought. Uh, were there lessons learned from the Heights case with the litigation that were applied in this plan? Were the committee, uh, were you checking with the neighbors to see if they are, they are likely uh, <laughs> to sue? And uh, what is the level of, I know that there is no certainty or likelihood for such a thing, but what is the level of confidence that the one-year plan wanted to come to I, I, the, uh, the issues that led to the lawsuit, I don't think, exist in this project. And so uh, I, I, I don't think it is in There's any, a word stage right behind you. You want to knock on that? <laughs> 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 um, and so I, I think that it's, it's far less likely that there's never a 0% chance of something happening. But, uh, you know, we, uh, it, it's also a very different project in um, analyzing environments on that, but we have you know, worked with a team and super consultant and attorney to, to analyze, and um, we're, we're also looking at the um, potential impact of if we bust, and so we've looked at, so, so we're, we're making sure that we're covering all the things that one should analyze for this so that we could, um, uh, you know, mitigate any potential um, issue, uh, but I, I think that it is far less likely. So we are <laughs> 10 minutes over, um, but I do appreciate, so first of all, um, when we look at next steps, uh, we are looking at uh, you know, we do need to decide on phasing versus not, and so we're looking at trying to do that here over the course of the next couple of months, 
And then uh, we also then, as, as you well stated, we need to clarify the then if we're having students off campus. And it, much of what I've heard through the meetings has been that off campus is better than having them in during the construction, but we would like to have them together. And, um, and so it's loud and clear. Uh, uh, we'll, I think there are good ideas that come up around you know, how do we get some input on potential enrollments, um, how do we get some input on um, some of the options that have brought up. I think that there's some uh, further study that we can do just looking at, at numbers and how do things fit together. And so um, I, I appreciate the thinking around that. We'll take all of the uh, um, sheets that you've given and we, we use that to, to help us to see if there's something that didn't come off and maybe we need to investigate some further. As I talked about staff transition, will we working with the staff? Should we decide to move students off campus, then that would be the, the next step is to work with a staff and put a group together. And so getting people who are in teaching staff, front office staff, custodial staff, so we can see the whole picture um, helps us to, to see. Uh, and then should we move off campus, have students off campus, we look at uh, you know, preparing for that transition in the spring, and then uh, you know, that includes communication, it includes uh, working with families, it includes us setting it up so that our, our staff or our support is ready to go, and then whatever transition needs to happen. Uh, even if we are on campus, there, will need, there would need to be some of this because some parts of the campus are be closed off during construction, so there will be some need for some portion of this, these next steps to happen to help us to um, make it as smooth as possible going into next year. Uh, we appreciate it again. Yeah, we're trying to come back to you and have the conversation and help to understand questions and, and, and concerns and, and uh, other things you should consider um, through the process and bring more information. So we will um, be looking to um, circle back um, with next steps. Yeah. Have you thought about doing a press release when you do the survey so that people who might have kids that are coming up to kindergarten or maybe they're in private school now and they're thinking about this district? Uh, they're not getting any of these communications, and the website's not always clear as to where the mm -hmm. survey is aren't open for very long. So, if you really want input from the community, that might be an idea. Thank you. Yeah, for our sixth graders, I think it'd be cool to dedicate outdoor spaces because I know that the new plan has like all these outdoor areas, like dedicate or name them for the students because I think there's going to be what 10 or 11. I figure there's got to be that many spaces. Like be a nice way to honor our sixth graders who are at another campus and coming back. All right, well, thank you. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. We're really excited about oh, this project. Thank you for helping us take it together. Thank you. 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 Thank you.